I have this box and it is entirely full with gigantic poofy tulle pink fabric. Like I don't even remember how much I purchased because I've had this box in my stash for, I think I remember buying it last year. I know I wanted to make a big poofy gown, like one of those Insta gowns that you see, and I, I bought a ton of it. And I think it's time to use it. This box is just getting a little beat up because I keep tossing it from one end of the room to the other to make more space. And I'm like, what better way to use it than just use it? So here's what I'm planning. My thought is I'm going to use the same pattern that I used for my little Grinch outfit, like where the top is that fitted bustier style, and then do a full circle skirt and then absolutely cover that circle skirt in yards and yards and yards of tulle. How I'm gonna cover the circle skirt is definitely the part that's up in the air. I have a couple different ideas. I need to know exactly how much tulle I actually have before I really get into that. So I'm thinking let's build the base and go from there. There's a receipt in here. It says I purchased 10 40 yard bolts. I have 400 yards of tool to put on this dress. When did I buy this? November 26th of last year. It was for a New Year's dress. Okay, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. We're making the dress. Upon further inspection, it says I paid $20 to have this shipped. That is so unlike me. I will add so much stuff into my cart, and then if the shipping is over $6, I'm like, eh, I don't need it. So the fact that I paid $20 to ship this is insane. Now I have to use the fabric, like I don't have a choice. We have to make something out of it now. I remember buying this pink fabric because I wanted to use it on the skirt, but then I also remember thinking I might not have enough to do the bodice part, and so then I thought, oh, I'll just run out and go grab some other fabric. Well, after about an hour of looking, I even took my extensions out because I was like sweating. Um, I found the fabric that I bought and it is not the same color. On camera, they're not bad though. So you know what? We're going with it. Anxiety resolved, I'm cured. Because the skirt is a giant circle and it needs to hang on the bias for at least 24 hours before I really work on it, I decided to start with that. I fold all six yards of fabric in half and then cut it at the midway point. I am six feet tall and it turns out that six yards of fabric is definitely that sweet spot for creating a full floor length circle skirt. I sew both halves together to make one gigantic more of like a square shape. And then I just kind of measured my body to make sure that this was gonna work. This is the Tupperware lid that I use to make circles with for my waist. It's significantly smaller than my waist is, but it gives me a really good round edge and I'd rather cut it a little bit too small than like gigantic. This size allows me to surge around the opening and then it's like pretty much perfect for what I need. So this is my halfway point and I'm going to put the lid just kind of like there-ish and do my best to cut around. Shown here, I'm also doing my best to not cut my carpet up. And then once that circle is cut, I just surge all the way around the opening to make sure that it is secure. Moving on to the bodice. This first fabric is what I'm going to be using for the outside. This yellow stuff is the inside structural material, and then this cotton bed sheet is what I'll be using for the lining. I love recycling material whenever possible. I started by cutting this out without even pinning anything. I just thought I could wing it. I was very wrong. This is my favorite bodice pattern at the moment. I will link it down in the bio below because if you don't own this, if you haven't tried this bodice pattern yet, you totally should give it a try. It is so easy and so simple. And there's a really great video that shows you step-by-step step exactly how to do it. And it's done by the creator of the pattern, so definitely go support them. It's Daria Patterns. Um, it's like 12 bucks. This is the best 12 bucks I've ever spent. I've made this pattern so many times. It's totally worth it. Honestly, the most difficult part about the entire thing is just keeping your booby pattern pieces straight because there are so many of them. And when you're doing three layers like this, it can get kind of confusing. So I always make sure to just mark them and make sure they're all pinned together and then I sew them all together all at the same time just like I'm showing here. I want to say this technique is called chain stitching where you just sew everything all together in like one big long line and then you just cut it apart. Um, but that is definitely the best way to go about this pattern when using this many layers. I like to iron everything in sequence, sew everything in sequence, uh, it really, really helps me keep everything straight and organized, and sometimes it's really easy to get your pieces upside down or backwards, and doing it in this method keeps you from getting confused to the point where you're completely destroying your pattern because you just didn't have it organized. And that totally happens. I've done it a couple of times, and it's devastating. 
So if you get one thing out of this video, other than I really, really struggled in the last half of it, I hope that you just kind of like grasp this concept of taking it step by step and working it bit by bit. And ultimately you're gonna end up with a pretty cool garment if you just follow the instructions. Again, go watch Daria's video, it's amazing. Once I have all of the booby pattern pieces mostly put together and everything is top stitched and looks good, I layer them in a really specific way. I pin them fashion fabric and lining right sides together and then the structural fabric behind that. That way when I flip it inside out, my fashion fabric and my lining are sandwiching that structural layer together. If you go back and watch my Martha May party dress video, you'll see that I sandwiched these layers completely wrong. And so the lining fabric is actually sandwiched in between the structural layer and the fashion fabric, which is okay. But I definitely try to avoid that, especially because it's such an easy mistake to make. And then when you get to the point where you actually realize that's what you've done, it's like, do I unpick everything or do I just keep going? And most of the time I just keep going. Now that we're done with the booby cups, we're gonna move on to the body part of the bodice. What we got here is our basic sewing structure. We got pattern pieces cut out and pinned together, and then I'm seaming everything all together and then ironing all of my layers flat, making sure that my seams are pressed outward, not open. I legit never skip the ironing step of this process because ironing all of your seams and making sure your fabric is flat and nice and looks good totally elevates the look of the end product. And just to reiterate what I was talking about before as far as layering up your fabrics in the correct order, just double check. Always double check, triple check if you have that your layers are all in the right order. Because then when you flip everything right sides out, your structural fabric is nowhere to be seen. And even though these colors are not the same, I really, really like the way that they go together and the inside's never gonna be seen anyways. New day, fresh day. It's the morning right now, but it doesn't feel like it because it's so cloudy and snowy outside. It just feels really dark, it should be like, way lighter than it is right now so i've got like all the house lights on uh i have the booby cups they are both done that's looking great and then as far as the bodice is concerned i am still just top stitching the lining down and then after this i'm going to insert the bones insert the booby cups um and then finish this top up and then i can get over to this guy right here and finish cutting the skirt. My windows are really dirty. They're kind of high up and I can't reach them to clean the outside of it, but it is still snowing. There is so much snow on the ground. I have everything pinned and ready to move on to the next step, which is sewing the boning channels. This is one part of this process that I really, really like. I like sewing those really straight, perfect, perpendicular lines. I love the way it looks. I love the whole process. It just fills me with so much weird joy, only to completely be taken away when I have to actually cut and insert the bone. But I guess before I have to do that, I'm procrastinating by setting the booby cups into the bodice. This is definitely a process where you're gonna wanna like pin and try it on and pin and try it on because you don't want your booby cups to be kind of like uneven. Because I kid you not, if you're not careful and you set your booby cups in and they're not even, it's gonna look like one booby is winking at the other. All that's left to do is add the bones in and then do the grommets down the sides at the back. Uh, and I'm gonna do that when I get back from the grocery store because I told myself yesterday that when it stopped snowing, I would go get groceries. It never stopped snowing. Right now is the first time it has stopped snowing in two days. So I'm gonna go get some food. I'm back. A lot of you might be thinking, hey, did you just use that trip to the market to continue procrastinating putting the bones into the bodice? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did because I hate this process. I hate this part of the thing. I hate sanding them down. I hate cutting them up. It's the worst, but you gotta do it if you wanted to have structure. You know, I mean, if you want a floppy bodice, go ahead and skip this step, but I want mine to stand up on its own. And I'm like here recording this and watching the footage of me sanding all these little sticks down and it's just filling me with anger. It's fueling my hate fire for this process because it takes so long. Just doing this took me like an hour and a half. I wish it went so much faster, but it doesn't. Finally being done with it and then being able to put all the little sticks into the channels is like a reward. And sewing the binding at the bottom of the bodice is like the light at the end of the tunnel because these bones are never gonna be seen again. Moving on to the last part of the bodice, which is pretty much just installing the grommets. I punch holes directly into my fabric and then use E6000 in between the grommets or rivets or whatever they're called before I punch them down. And that really, really helps them stay. A lot of people don't like this method, but it's my project. So I'm gonna mind my business and do it how I wanna do it. 
And here we are, three days later, finally getting to the point in this project where we are combining the bodice to the bottom of the skirt. Sew and serge, sew and serge. And then I'm going to top stitch this seaming so that it's nice and crispy. Chef's kiss, it's these little details that just punch it up to the next level. Now that everything is sewn together, it's time to debate how do I want to cut the bottom of the skirt? What do I want the hem to look like? How long do I want to spend surveying this property? A while. The answer is a while, before deciding to impulsively just cut it the way I always cut it. And I am definitely a more is more kind of gal. I will always try to cut the bottom of the dress to be just as long and full and elegant as absolutely possible, even if it doesn't really even make sense for the character. This isn't even a difficult part of the outfit. I just need to finish hemming the skirt and then I can start adding the tool on, but I think I'm afraid to do the tool. It's intimidating and it's hard to work with and keeping the line straight is tough and it's just gonna be so much, but then I'm like, what if I don't have enough? And there's just so many things that could go wrong. Turns out I just needed to complain a little bit. And now I'm back to like, you know, regular working hours. The plan is to take these two cutoffs from the hem of the skirt, sew them together that way, and then sew this way together onto the skirt to give myself an extra foot or so in length for the back of the skirt. I've done it before, it'll work. Piecing is period. Not that this is like a historical costume by any means, but I'm doing it. But aren't you kind of shooting yourself in the foot by adding more work for you to do? Um, no, because if I can bring the drama, I'm gonna bring the drama. If it can be bigger, if it can be shinier, it's gonna be bigger, it's gonna be shinier. Within reason and within budget, I will always try to bring the drama, except for in social situations because that's exhausting. And you know what else is exhausting? Consistently overestimating my abilities to make one side equal to the other by just eyeballing it. But you know what? I'm going with it. This train is not stopping. And after simply doing my best to hem the skirt, I've decided to add some horsehair braid to the bottom. I just sew it onto the right side of the fabric and then flip it under and sew it down again and it just looks so nice. The day I discovered this stuff was definitely a turning point in my abilities to make things look poofy. Today's the day. Today's the day! I'm putting all the poofy stuff on the skirt. I got my poofy stuff, I got the skirt, this box full of stuff. I have my AirPods charged because one thing that I find really helps me when I'm doing a task that I am either like nervous to do or kind of afraid of or intimidated by is I put AirPods in instead of like watching a show while I craft and that way I'm not like distracted watching the show I can just like be here and definitely putting all of the fluff onto the dress is a task that is kind of daunting and I've kind of been avoiding it for a while so I'm in my jammies I have a big glass of water I get really thirsty my headphones are charged it's it's gonna be a long day me from the past had no idea what I was in for when I decided to cover this entire floor length circle skirt in tool. And not just a little bit of tool, a ton of tiny strips of tool. Here I am just filming this thinking, oh my gosh, look at this one that I've done. It looks so nice, just this one, one of them. This took me like 30 minutes to do. Here I am and I'm like, oh, everything's so easy. This technique is working. It's not fighting me. I'm listening to true crime documentaries. Life is good. Life is sweet. This should only take me until the end of the day. Um, no. No, I was wrong. And the signs are starting to show. I kind of realized that if I wanted these vertical strips of pleated tulle to be you know, straight and look nice, I was gonna have to start drawing lines on with something. And so I found this pink marker tool thing that eventually just goes away with air, but like I could barely see it, which was a good thing and a bad thing because I knew it wouldn't be visible for the final product, but like trying to find the pink on pink line was, was tricky. It was tricky. And just like look at this real time example of what I'm doing here. Just pleating the little like three or four inch sections at a time is exhausting. It takes so much patience. The static electricity 
in this project is so real. I can feel like the hairs on my arms sticking up and like my pajamas are just like staticking to me. Every time I touch this and sew with it, it is just like more and more static electricity. So that's not something I was expecting, but this is where we're at. So I've got like a couple different, oh, don't look at that. That was my Christmas stuff. I have it in sections. I have like an eighth, like I chopped it in half, 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 half and then started filling it in like around in like, uh, like kind of like an order, like I was doing it in order. And I think this is working really well. I'm just gonna continue filling in like this middle section and then this middle section, I'll go all the way around and then I'll fill in like the middle section in between that and the middle section in between that. And it is a lot of work. I've got a lot of ground to cover. This, just this has taken me a couple of hours. So it's time to get back to work. And by a couple of hours, I mean like eight or nine or maybe 10, I really started to lose track. And I have this philosophy that if I'm gonna sew, I wanna be comfortable. And so that's why we always craft in pajamas in this house. This is the first time that I really, really like needed pajamas because I was so uncomfortable this entire time. Like I can't imagine doing this in anything other than a pair of loose fitting clothes. I've been doing this for hours. I started at like eight o'clock in the morning and now it's four. I've taken a short break just to like eat lunch and do a little bit of laundry. And I've just been doing these all day long. And I, I think I might be nearing the halfway point, but the problem is, is that I'm the one that gets to decide when it's done. So it could maybe not be the halfway point. I could only be a quarter of the way there because it's not poofy enough. And that's on me. I should do some like exercises because my body kind of hurts from just sitting down. Like I know that's lame, but I've just been sitting and sewing like this for hours and hours and hours. And I'm just like, wow, I need, I need a break. I need to do some, I need to go, I need to go for like a walk. I need to go for a walk. I need to get out. But maybe I'm close to finishing, but I'm like, maybe I'm not, I don't know. I definitely had a complete fall apart after filming that short clip. Yeah, and uh, out of respect for my own self, I cut that part out. Like, just look at this dress, it is growing. And I bit off a little bit more than I could chew in a one week project. It's been hours. I've had a few interruptions, but for the most part, I've been just sitting here, sewing these ruffles on. And I totally, for the first time in my life, I understand why someone would just buy fabric that already has ruffles on it instead of sewing them all on. Because like, yeah, it's much more expensive, but I could have had this skirt done in, you know, two hours instead of, I think we're going on 18. That can't be right. I can't do math right now. All I know is ruffles. The mind numbing process of just absolutely wrestling this tool to get the little presser foot in there and make it look somewhat decent was deteriorating my brain like craft brain rot. I'm definitely to the point in this build where I have to take a break every like 45 minutes and do some like stretches and exercises because my neck and my shoulders are killing me from like sewing. You know, like, why do we sew like this? Why am I so tense and like uptight? It's just sewing. It doesn't have to be that big of a deal, but like I'm giving myself a headache over it. I just need to relax and continue to take sewing breaks because I guess that's, I guess that's just my life now. I decided to put the dress on my mannequin just to see what my progress actually looked like. And honestly, it looked really, really good from the back, but I had a lot of work to do on the front and then something happened. Full disclosure, I have not worked on this for three or four days and it's because I suffer from chronic pain, which is a thing I forget about until I spend 24 hours over the course of three days sitting in a chair sewing something like this and then I am like physically ill afterwards, which is, it's ridiculous, but like, you know, you gotta respect your, your physical boundaries and stuff. So I took a break and unfortunately in that break I planned so many more costumes and so now this heaping pile of bubblegum tool is what's keeping me from working on other new stuff and now I have to overcome this giant loofah mountain to work on those new projects because I'm not gonna let this one get this far and then not finish it so I am recommitting myself to 
periodic stretching breaks in between sewing, and I want to finish this like today or tomorrow, like soon. And so, with a new outlook and a new perspective on using stretching periodically throughout the sewing day, she got to work sewing and stretching and sewing some more and then doing other stretches that maybe don't make a whole lot of sense but just trying to move her body, she started actually getting the dress done. There was lots of moving the camera into new and interesting angles and lots of trying to remember what all those yoga poses were from your college yoga days. She did her best to absolutely fight back against the gremlin style arch in her back using things like reverse plank upward dog swan stretch and the day soon turned to night. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight panels left. And in each panel I have like two more rows. So I only have 16 more rows of fluff to do and then I'm done with this project. I was finally in the home stretch of this project and the light at the end of this tunnel was more glorious and beautiful a light than ever I had seen before. like a bunch of kids sledding over on the hill over there. And look how pretty this is. This is the setup. Tripod, dress. There's deer poop everywhere, so we have to be really careful. There's definitely some over there where I've been sent. Wait. Nope, not deer poop. But over there is definitely some. Real professional setup right here, guys. Alright. I'm not really sure if this one was all worth it because I feel like the amount of time it takes to do this effect, um, I might as well just buy fabric that already looks like this because the fabric is expensive and I would have to buy about six yards of it, but I would save myself two weeks of just sitting at my sewing machine working on the same project for very little payoff. Do I like walking around the mountainside looking like a giant pink loofah? Yeah. A lot of people were like, hey, I saw you from a long ways away. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I'm a big pink bubblegum. Overall, I do like it. I'll definitely keep this technique in my arsenal, but I probably won't use it on this large of a scale project for a while. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon. And in this house, we craft in pajamas. Got a Pick it all up and do your best.